Well, hello everybody. I'm here a minute early. We're getting uh, started for our uh, Lisa Longball Women's International Day, which will be actually on March 8th, but uh, we're celebrating it a little bit early. Today's the Monday of the beginning of the week uh, that we're gonna be celebrating on Wednesday, March 8th. So absolutely excited to be here. So we'll give it about one minute just to let people get into the room here and so that we all start at the same time. So say hello and throw a name in the chat. If you're watching, tell me where you're watching from. I'd, I'd love to hear and thanks for joining me today. Perfect, perfect. I'm excited to get started. We're going to have so many great tips. Today's clinic is going to be focused uh, on women. So we're going to talk about things that are going to help women become better golfers to hit the golf ball longer, straighter, better, drop those scores. All things that uh, women will really appreciate. So, oh, I already see some of the likes coming up. Uh, so that's wonderful. Uh, thanks very much for sharing there. And uh, oh, I've got uh, Jose from Gatineau, Quebec. Hello, Jose. And checking in from Crossfield, Alberta. Mary, and great to see you. Andrea from Edmonton. Thanks so much for joining. Joining. And I've got Jane from Akron, Ohio. Woohoo! Love it. Really, truly is going to be an international women's uh, day and clinic that we're going to be celebrating. So, hello, Tracy. I see that you say hello, say hello as well, too. So, thrilled you're joining. Okay, we are at the time, our start time now. So, I'm going to get started. So, first of all, welcome. I miss you all. I miss my clinics. My last clinic or, I, or a video that I did for Golf Town was at the holiday gift giving, which I super enjoyed. Uh, but now, hey, it's March. It is almost springtime. So it is also a wonderful celebration of on Wednesday, March 8th, it will be International Women's Day. This is a day to celebrate fantastic women, to celebrate women, our bond, our camaraderie, how we can lift each other up, all of those wonderful things. And so today, of course, Monday of the beginning of this uh, week, uh, with Wednesday being uh, the International Women's Day, we thought, let's do a clinic. Let's do a clinic so women can start their golf season off super strong, hitting that golf ball longer, straighter, better. I just want to do a shout out. I see Tracy from Chattanooga. Tennessee. Hello. Thanks for joining us. Oh, and Peggy, you said my videos have helped your game so much. Uh, thank you so much from Arkansas. I so appreciate that. And Lynn. Hello, Lynn. Wonderful to see you from Montreal. That's wonderful. All right, let's get started. We're going to be about a half an hour, so I've got lots to go over. And if you miss anything, I will be posting this video on the Golf Town Facebook page so you can find it at any time to get for a refresh. All right, let's talk about things that can help women hit that golf ball longer, straighter, better. Number one is posture. This is one of the biggest things that I see that women do incorrectly that kill their distance. So I like to talk about posture in a four-step process to posture. So with posture, I like to think of it as step number one, standing up nice and tall. And usually women do this very nicely. Step number two is bow at the waist, butt sticks out. Where I find women do this well, they do a nice job of standing tall. Number two, bow at the waist, butt sticks out. But then what happens is they end up tucking their bum in. Somewhere along the way, a lot of women have been told, oh, you want to pretend you're sitting in a chair. Well, holy cow, that is not going to help you hit this golf ball any longer, straighter, or better. So the key is we need to get the girls, see the girls here, we got to get the girls facing the ground. We've got to get the girls facing the ground. I was actually at a clinic in Winnipeg, and I'm going to share this secret with you. So this past summer, I was doing a fun clinic, and I was trying to tell the ladies about how do we get the tassels hanging on the ground, or, 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 or the, sorry, the girls facing towards the ground. And sure enough, there was a van that uh, drove by, and the van was kind of a kind of a shop that for uh, uh, adult entertainment. And we were giggling, and I said, ladies, we need to raid that van, because if we had tassels, if we all put tassels on the girls, and we need those tassels to be facing the ground. Ground. I'm trying to give you a visual image, something to get you thinking, I have to have my girls facing the ground. If your girls don't face the ground, you have no hope of brushing the grass and hitting a great golf ball. So this is so key in posture, is too many times when ladies, they stand up nice and tall, step number one, step number two, bow at the waist, butt sticks out. What happens is if they tuck their bum in, now your girls are facing this way. Think of it as droopy tassels. No one wants droopy tassels. You want those tassels hanging straight to the ground. So not sure if that helps you, but if it does, uh, I want you to have that vis visual image of getting those tassels to face the ground. So four step process to posture. Step number one, stand up nice and tall. Step number two, bow at the, uh, at the waist, butt sticks out. Now the reason we need to have that nice straight flat back is we need to be able to turn around the spine. Now again, I find women do this correctly, but some of us who have desk jobs, I find sometimes we can get those hunchy shoulders if we're sitting at our computer too long or just we kind of get used to kind of hunching where we're standing. If you get into that hunchy posture when you're getting into your golf swing, look how hard it is to turn. That's why that nice straight flat back will help you turn around your spine, which is going to help so much in getting 
what we call coil and torque. That's where the distance is going to come from. So that is super key. All right. So step number three is quite simple. Uh, uh, step number one, stand up nice and tall. Step number two, balance the waist butt sticks out. Step number three is just crack the knees, not bend the knees, just simply crack them. And step number four is arms hang naturally. Now this one is very key because what happens with a lot of women is a lot of women tend to reach so here's the thing, the body's a miracle. So the body is always trying to find neutral. So neutral is when you allow your arms to just hang naturally from your shoulder joints. So if your arms are hanging naturally from your shoulder joints, that's exactly what your body's gonna try to find as it goes through the golf swing. Now, what happens is I often find that when people are setting up for their golf ball, if their golf ball is farther away from them, they've done the four step process, stand up nice and tall, bow at the waist, butt sticks out, crack the knees, arms hang naturally, and if that ball is far away, they reach out. And can you see this gap? When your arms hang naturally, your gap should only be about a fist width from your shorts, your skirt, your, your pants, whatever you're wearing, should only be about a fist width. The second you start reaching out, this is where inconsistency happens. Ladies tell me all the time, oh Lisa, I'm really inconsistent. This is a huge reason why you may be inconsistent, is that you may be reaching. So if your ball, when you do the four step process to posture, stand up nice and tall, bow at the waist, butt sticks out, tassels are hanging down, crack the knees, arms hang naturally. If your ball is there, instead of reaching, what I want you to do is what I call scoot. I want you to go scoot, 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 scoot. I want you to scoot up, scoot up until you get to where the golf ball is. And I find it's really important, especially with driver, drivers where, where people really try to, stretch, to reach out there, okay? So when, do the four step process to posture, and then I want you to scooch out, scooch up to your ball until you get to your ball, arms hanging naturally, never, ever, ever reaching. Because what happens is, when we go through our golf swing, if you started, Re reached out like this and you go through your golf swing when you come to impact your body's going to try to find neutral if you started out here wing a prayer you might catch it sometimes you're going to miss it a lot and that's the big consistency issue so i find that women do this incorrectly quite a little bit here so i'm just going to do a shout out here i see Kristen's watching and heather nancy has joined us from massachusetts awesome that's fantastic so we've talked about the posture but here's another spot where women ask me all the time hey lisa where do I put my arms? Are my arms above the girls, below the girls? Where do I put my arms? And ladies, for those of us, who, of you, not me, but those of you who are, you know, have more well endowed in the chest area, this can be a huge problem. The girls are often getting in the way when you're swinging. So I have honestly heard, okay, oh no, no, you put the arms above the girls, above the girls. Well, ladies, look at my shoulders. My shoulders are up near my chin here and that's causing a lot of tension. Tension is a club head speed killer. If you want to hit it farther, zero tension in your golf swing. Loose supple muscles are fast muscles. Tight muscles are not fast muscles. Loose supple muscles are fast muscles, so no tension. So it's definitely not above the girls. Then I've heard, oh no, 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 no. What you want to do is you want to go below the girls, below the girls and just kind of push up. Well, boy, oh boy, that ladies, that's just a push up rock commercial there. It's definitely not that. And then I've honestly heard, oh no, you go one on top, one underneath. Well, ladies, that's a mammogram. That's a mammogram. And although I do want you getting one once a year, I don't want it happening on the golf course all the time. So here's the issue. The reason that women are complaining all the time, say, gosh, I keep running into my, to my girls when I swing. What happens is this is the number one reason that I have found why women, most women, 80% uh, of women can't hit it over 200 yards. Women tend to be arms lifters versus turns. What do I mean by that? So women, we our one, one of our secret sauces that we have that helps us hit the golf ball great is that we tend to be a little bit more flexible than our male counterparts. So that means when we get to the top of the backswing, you'd be like, oh wow, look at that great turn. When in fact, ladies, I haven't turned one bit. All I did was lift my arms and all I can do is drop them. And so if you're thinking to yourself, huh, am I an arms lifter? Ask yourself, do you hit your eight iron as far as your seven iron, as far as your six iron? And if the answer is yes, you're probably an arms lifter. So we gotta get you turning, we gotta get you turning. So it's super important that we get that turning. I just wanna do a shout out. I see that, oh my a fellow Lisa there from, uh, from Lexington, South Carolina, thanks for joining us. And Rose from Dartmouth, Nova Scotia. I was just in Nova Scotia a week ago. I was flying home from the Canada Winter Games uh, in Prince Edward Island and I flew out of Halifax. I love, love that area of the country. So uh, ladies, I cannot express to you how important it is that we need to make sure we do those turns, okay? So that's what's gonna help with our arms. So this is 
what I want you to think. So ladies, for, to stop the arms lifting, so if you're someone that hits your eight iron as far as your seven iron as far as your six iron, and you're like, oh, how do I stop that? Ladies, you need to make a turn. So what's gonna happen is, if you're an arms lifter, if you're an arms lifter, you're gonna bump into those bad girls all day long. Now watch the secret sauce. Here's the secret sauce, are you ready? If you start your backswing with your lead shoulder, so that's your left shoulder for my right-handed golfers, right shoulder for my left-handed golfers, so the shoulder closest to the fairway. If you start your golf swing with that, watch, watch, watch. Watch the magic. Watch the magic. Here we go. Look, look, look. Look, the girls come with you. The girls come with you. The girls come with you. So you're not going to bump into them. If you're an arms lifter, you will bump into those bad girls all day long. If you turn, the girls will come with you. Now, if you're a double D or bigger, I would say maybe slightly underneath slightly underneath, but nothing too exaggerated. And then always make sure you must, 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 must start your backswing with your lead shoulder. If you do that, you are guaranteed to turn. You can't help but to turn, which is gonna add tons of distance to every club in your bag and also help you hit it better, okay? So super, super important for posture, the four step process to posture, stand up nice and tall, bow at the waist, butt stick us out, tassels hanging down, crack the knees, arms hang naturally, we never ever reach. We never reach and we start that backswing with our lead shoulder. Okay, and that leads us into our next tip. And that is, if you've watched any of my videos, you know that there's three big key points that I talk about all the time. One of my first key points, you need to turn the shirt, turn the skirt. What do I mean by turn the shirt, turn the skirt? So I'm talking for anyone who wants distance, anyone who's think, sitting there going, oh man, I, I just don't hit my driver that far, I don't hit my irons that far, my fairy woods, this will help you. This will help you gain distance with every club in your bag, okay? So it starts with the idea that the golf swing, this is the top half of the body and this is the lower half, okay? You want to start your backswing with the top half of your body. So the lower half of your body is gonna stay quiet and the top half of your body is gonna turn. I've already told you, we need to start the backswing with the lead shoulder, not your hands, not your arms, lead shoulder. So keep the lower body still, that's the turn the shirt. So in your backswing, just your shirt should be turning, okay? Just your shirt and your lower body's quiet. And then stop, you've gotta stop and hold it there. Now, in your downswing, the very first move in your downswing needs to be that lower body. So it needs to be the lead hip, the lead pocket, the belt buckle, anything that makes you turn. I like turn your guts. I love the idea of turn your guts. So turn your shirt in the backswing and turn your skirt in the downswing or your pants or your shorts, whatever it is that we're wearing, but that's what we wanna turn. Turn the shirt in the backswing, turn the pants in the downswing. So what that does is that creates coil and torque. That's where the distance, that's where the distance is gonna come from. So if you're an arms lifter, there's zero coil and torque. That's why we need to turn. So step number one, to start with that lead shoulder, turn the shirt and then stop Hold it there, and the first move in the downswing has to be turn the pants. Now, I'm going to talk to you, but I have a lot of women that say to me, okay, Lisa, I get it. I get turn the shirt, turn the skirt, but my body doesn't want to do it. How can you help me do turn the shirt, turn the skirt? Well, I'm going to teach you a new drill right now about dissociation. Just going to do a shout out. Leslie from uh, uh, New Hamburg, Ontario. Thanks for joining us. Thrilled that you're enjoying it. Kathy from New Jersey. Woo-woo, Jersey girl. And Maureen uh, says hi to Carla. That's awesome. Okay, here's my dissociation drill. For those of you who struggle with turn the shirt, turn the skirt, or you know that you're an arms lifter, here's the key. So what is dissociation? Dissociation is when you're only moving one part of your body and not the other. And that's how we're going to get that to coil and turn. So ladies, right now with me, join me right now. What I want you to do is cross your arms over your shoulders, leave your lower body still. I want you to pretend there's rods coming out of your hips. So it's like pulling you straight. Your hips are not allowed to move, okay? So hips stay very quiet. I want you to turn your shirt, come back to the middle, turn your shirt the other way. Do not move those hips. Come back to the middle, turn, don't move those hips. Back to the middle, turn, and back to the middle. Now stop, okay? This time, shoulders are gonna stay still. So ladies, I want you to do this with me. Hold the shoulders, they stay still. You have rods coming to your shoulders. You are not allowed to move your shoulders. Only your hips are gonna turn this time, okay? So shoulders stay still, here we go. Turn your skirt, come back to neutral. Turn your skirt, come back to neutral. Turn the skirt, back to neutral. Turn the skirt, back to neutral. Okay, this time we're gonna do it in golf posture. So this time, we're gonna stand up nice and tall, bow at the waist, butt sticks out, crack the knees, arms hang naturally, but I'll have you cross them here. What I want you to do, we're just gonna do half of it. Turn the shirt, leave it, turn the skirt. Okay, back to neutral. Turn the shirt, leave it, turn the skirt. Okay, and one more time. Turn the shirt, leave it, turn the skirt. Ladies, if you do these drills at home, do them in a 
mirror, video yourself doing them. You will start to see, and those of you who are struggling, not moving your hips with you with your shoulders, this is how you're gonna help train yourself for turn the shirt, turn the skirt. This is huge. Another great thing is you can stand in your doorway in a, a door frame, hold the door frame like this and practice turning the skirt and not allowing your shoulders to move. So that's a great one to help turn that lower body is uh, holding a door frame to practice doing that. So those are some great dissociation drills to help you with turn the shirt, turn the skirt. That is the huge, the biggest tip I can give all women and guys too. That's the secret sauce for guys too. So maybe don't, don't share them if you're hubby if you're trying to outdrive them <laughs> or your brother or your dad or your grandpa. So keep that to yourself if you're trying to outdrive them. But that's the key. Now, here's one more great distance tip that is gonna be huge as part of turn the shirt turn the skirt so we talked about in the turn the shirt we always start with our lead shoulder it has to start with your lead shoulder never your hands never your arms big muscles only so I'm gonna start with turn the shirt and I'm going to leave it but here's the deal I need you to feel weight I want you to feel pressure on the instep of your back foot so when you turn your lead shoulder you're going to turn into the instep of your back foot I want you to feel pressure on the instep because a lot of women say to me, gosh, Lisa, I really, I struggle. I can turn the shirt, but I struggle getting the skirt going. Well, if you load into that back instep of your foot, now you have something to push off of. So you've got to load your weight into that instep of the back foot, and then you have something to push off of. Okay. So as you get starting that back swing, you're going to start with the lead shoulder. You're going to turn the shirt and then feel pressure onto the instep of that back foot. And then to start the downswing, push. You're gonna push off that instep of the, of, the, of the lead foot, which will help turn your lead pocket, turn your belt buckle, turn your guts. It is a game changer. So many ladies have told me how much they love that when they feel that pressure. Ladies, I came up in the 2016 World Long Drive Championships. I came second place to a five-time world champion, Sandra Carlberg from Sweden. She's awesome. She's awesome. And when I watched the video uh, on uh, ESPN afterwards and Golf Channel, when I watched that, uh, what I noticed was my weight was shifting. So I had a weight, a, a, a weight a leak or a power leak, should I say. So what happened is when I turned my shirt, I let weight sneak to the outside of my foot, to the outside of my back foot. The second I did that, that was a power leak and I lost by three yards. So again, ladies, I, as soon as you let weight sneak to the outside of that back foot, that's a power leak. So you have to feel that weight inside. You know some of those like little door stops, the little triangular door stops that you can st stuff under your door to keep your door open? You can even buy one of those at Home Depot. Put it under your back foot just to practice, like just when you're at the range or in your backyard. I don't know if my backyard has snow in it right now, so maybe your basement, as long as your ceilings are high enough. But just to get that sense of turn the lead shoulder and then have the back foot propped up by a little, that little door jam or something to just hold up that back foot. Could even be a book or something. Anything to get that weight into the back foot. I'm just going to do a shout out. Liz from Reno, Nevada. Our golf course is six feet under snow. I hear you, sister. You should see what's going on in Calgary, Alberta right now. I feel your pain. I feel your pain. So, uh, and then Terry, ah, she had an aha moment. Woohoo! That's what I love, ladies. I want you to have those boom, aha moments. This is a game changer. Now, it'll take a little bit to practice, and I highly recommend take your cell phone, throw it on the selfie mode, and just throw it on a chair, record yourself, and record yourself in slow motion video. You will see right away. Am I starting with my lead shoulder? What's my first move in my downswing? Because my first move should be my lower body, always my lower body, because ladies, if you think about it, if you wind up from the top, you wanna unwind from the bottom. So watch this. So let's say I do a turn the shirt, so I start with my lead shoulder. Here's a turn the shirt, so I've done incredible coil and torque. Now, how do I know I've done coil and torque? So look at me right here. So if I arms lifted, my girls would still be facing the ball. If I start with my lead shoulder, my girls are facing behind me and my back would be facing the target. That's how you know you've turned. So again, we're going to start with that lead shoulder, get that weight into the instep now and push off of that. But watch what happens if you don't. So let's say you do a great turn. You've done an amazing turn, but let's say you start your downswing with your upper body because ladies, when we get tired, especially near the end of the round, it is so much easier to start our downswing with our back arm than it is with our guts. Because by 16, 17, 18, you're getting tired, right? And it depends if you have any birdie juice out there or anything like that. You can even be more tired. So the easy thing to do is to start with that back arm. And so for those of you who pull the ball, so for my right-handed golfers, if you hit it left a lot, or my lefties, if you hit it right a lot, 
You could be starting your downswing with your back arm. Uh, that's one of the biggest reasons why you pull the ball. And watch this, there's no coil and torque. So if I turn the shirt in the backswing and I turn the skirt in the downswing, when I get to the ball, look at how I'm coiled, look at how I'm torqued here. But if I start, if I turn the shirt in the backswing and turn the shirt in the downswing, my shoulders are facing the ball, my hips are facing the ball, no coil, no torque, no power, no distance, okay? So I cannot stress how strongly enough, practice those dissociation drills to practice just the upper part turning, then just the lower part turning, then do it in golf posture, video yourself and make sure you're feeling weight on the instep of that back foot so you can push off of it. Um, I see Pam from Newmarket, Ontario. Since, oh, she was at my school. Pam, Pam, of course, uh, in, Cal in uh, California at Palm Springs, and she got to golf in St. Kitts, and she uh, she used what she learned there and is hitting it great. Pam, thank you for sharing that. I love, I run women's golf schools all across North America because I want to help women hit it long and straight or better. So Pam, thank you for sharing that that has worked for you. I'm thrilled, thrilled, thrilled to hear that, Pam. All right, so next thing we want to talk about. So we've talked about the importance of posture. We've talked about turn the shirt, turn the skirt, dissociation, and making sure we get weight onto the instep of the back foot. Next thing, ladies, brush the grass. We have to brush the grass. And what do I mean by brush the grass? So ladies, you can have a gorgeous golf swing. It could look something like this. But if you don't brush the grass, that ball is going to go one foot off the ground. It's going to be a worm burner, a skinny shot, nothing beautiful, nothing beautiful. So you've got to make sure you brush the grass because you have to brush the grass to get that golf ball up in the air. And that's what gets your, you're, you're using your, that's how you let your irons or your fairy woods hybrids, that's how your clubs work. They're designed with different angles and loft to help launch the ball, but it doesn't work if you don't brush the grass. So how do you brush the grass? So this goes back to the, the coming out of our posture. Now, this is one of the biggest misconceptions I have ever, that, that, that bothers me so much in golf, and that is this. When uh, often I get uh, uh, paired with uh, my husband, I'll get paired with uh, uh, another couple, and uh, I'll watch the lady. She's got a gorgeous swing. She goes to make a swing, and it looks something like this. Okay, she makes her swing, goes to make her swing. And if you couldn't see, I kind of cold topped it. I kind of cold topped it there, and it hit kind of the lower part of my net. And then her spouse will often say to her, oh, honey, you lifted your head. You lifted your head. And she's thinking to herself, oh, I didn't think I lifted my head. And so the next thing, the next time she hits her golf ball, she's thinking, well, I don't want to lift my head. So she starts doing this. She starts doing this. She comes up. She doesn't want to lift her head. So she's got her head down. She goes to hit it again. And then she flops it off. She flops it again, just like I did there. And then uh, her spouse says to her, oh, sweetheart, you lifted your head. And she's like, I didn't lift my head. It was glued to my chest and the divorce open starts. Ladies, that is one of the worst things that anyone can say to you in golf. She didn't lift her head. What happened is, and we've all heard it, we've all heard it. She didn't lift her head. What happened was she came out of her posture. Now, bless her hubby's heart, bless her hubby's heart. If you look at it, it does look like it's a head lift. However, I can hit a golf ball right now. So I'm going to hit a golf ball right now. I'm gonna lift my head as high as humanly possible. I cannot lift my head any higher than this. Okay, I'm gonna be as high as I can. And as you see, I just ripped it onto that center target there. So it has nothing to do with lifting your head. When you hit a skinny low shot, which we all do, what's happened is you've come out of your posture. Uh, it, it has nothing to do with lifting your head. Okay, so the next time that you hit a low skinny shot, I want you to say to yourself, oh man, I came out of my posture. So usually what that means, you either lifted your torso or straightened your legs, or straightened your legs, or maybe a combination of the two, but what I usually see is lifting the torso. So what's the fix? I wanna give you the toolbox, what's the fix? So if you find that you're not brushing the grass or you're hitting a lot of golf balls in your round very skinny, this is what you need to do. You must start your backswing with your lead shoulder because watch this. If I start, I'll go this way so you can see. If I start my backswing with my arms, look, I'm almost in a standing position. My girls, I got droopy tassels. No one wants droopy tassels. Remember, we gotta keep those girls facing the ground at all times uh, before we get the golf ball. So if you are an arms lifter, right away you're out of your posture and it's just a wing and a prayer if you can get back into, into the proper posture. All right, so to stop that, lead shoulder. Your lead shoulder starts your backswing. Then you go around your spine. You're forced to go around your spine. Okay, so that's step number one. Step number two, if you need a swing thought, keep your butt out. What do I mean by keep your butt out? Watch this. 
If I lift my torso, watch my bum. See how my bum comes in? So if your bum, if you're getting it skinny, not only are you lifting your torso, but your bum is coming in. So I want you to think, start my backswing with my lead shoulder, butt out, butt out, butt out, and then swing. Okay? So that's your swing thought. If you're hitting it skinny, your fix is start the backswing with the lead shoulder, keep my butt out, keep my butt out, keep my butt out. That's your one swing thought, and I promise you, you will brush the grass. Okay? So that'll help. Um, Nathan, the amount of arguments on the golf course I get into when I hear you lifted your head drives me nuts. Nathan, I hear you. I hear you. It's so frustrating, right? Because it's not the right advice. And, and bless everyone's hearts. But again, unless you're a PG of Canada, PG of America instructor, you know... <laughs> If, 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 if you're a dentist for a living, if you're a geologist, if you're a, a, a school teacher, unless you, unless you teach golf for a living, please don't share those tips with other people because it gets in their kitchen and it's really hard, right? So Joe says, Linda, yay, and Janice is uh, uh, down. Oh, th I lift my head posture. That's me. So Janice, so this will help you. You're going to love this. You're going to love this. Start with the lead shoulder, keep the butt out, and I promise you, you will brush the grass, okay? All right, so we've talked about those keys. The next key I want to talk about, and this is huge for women, and that is if you've watched any of my videos before, you've heard me say, Finish your golf swing, finish your golf swing, finish your golf swing. What do I see from women? Women often can do a great job up into the ball, and then you know what they do? The second they hit the ball, I find women tend to slow down. Guys will do a much better job of after they hit the golf ball, they keep swinging through the finish, and that's exactly what I want to see. What do I see from a lot of women? So women will do a great job, you know, they listen to my lesson here, start the back swing with the lead shoulder, turn the shirt, uh, get weight into that back foot, push off that back foot, turn the lead hip or turn the guts, you know, brush the grass. And then the second they're done, I see this. The hands are by their face or just above their head. Often I'll see weight on their back foot. I'll do it this way actually, I'll do it this way for you. Often I'll see this, where I'll see the hands by the face of the head. I'll see the heel barely off the ground or even flat footed. And, and they think that that's the end of their golf swing. Ladies, you are losing 15 to 25 yards by doing that. Also, if you're a slicer, there's a huge good chance that if you're a slicer, you're not finishing your golf swing. So what happens is when you don't finish your golf swing, I'll do it right now with this ball. So if I'm gonna make a swing here, I'm gonna not finish my golf swing, so watch this. Here's my swing. I just hit that into the corner of my basement. Now luckily that one was a foam ball because my husband is not enjoying the drywall repairs that he had for my last video series. But, uh, but again, I hit that to the right corner of my basement. Why? Because I didn't finish my golf swing. So watch this. When I make my swing and I stop with my hands here, where are my hips facing? My hips are facing way out to the right here as a right-handed golfer. So they're facing the corner over here. So what happens is when you don't finish your golf swing, you don't allow your body to get through to the target. So you have to finish the golf swing. How do you know if you finish the golf swing? Here are your tips. This is how you know you finish the golf swing. Step number one, you should get your club to your back as best as you can. I want to see club to your back. Now, again, not up here as best as you can. That's why the LPGA logo looks the way it does, that the, the figurine or the figure in the LPGA logo has her club on her back. And as best you can, I need you to keep swinging till your club hits your back, okay? Number two, I should see the entire back sole of your golf shoe. Not just, not just the heel of your shoe, not just a little bit off, the entire, show me some soul, show me some soul. So when you swing, when you make a golf swing, what I want to see, I want to see when you finish, I want to see the entire back sole of your golf shoe. Entire back sole with arms here. And I, I, you know, at the end of your round, at the end of the round, your back foot should have a dirty toe. One of my students, Deb, who was at my school in Orlando, she texted me a picture this weekend of her golf shoe with a dirty toe. And I was like, yeah, baby, that's what I want to see. At the end of your round, you should have a dirty toe on your back foot because your whole foot, you showed me the sole and you got the tip of the back of your shoe uh, getting dirty. That's how I know that and getting your club to your back. So how do you do that? Here's a great swing thought. Many of you think the second you hit the ball, your job is done. So I want you to swing through the ball. A lot of you think swing to the ball. No, 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 no. Swing through the ball. Your club head should be moving fastest three feet past the ball. So as you come through the ball, your club head should be increasing. It should almost 
pull you, pull you to that front side. Swing through it, keep swinging till that club hits your back and you will be stunned at the amount of distance and the, how much straighter you hit it if you do those two things. So those are the big, big tips that I see for women to help them hit it longer, straighter, better. Now, what else can help women? I cannot emphasize this enough, being properly fitted. Number one, this is the most mis misfit club in most ladies' bags. Putter, ladies, you will make, although I love my driver, you know I love my driver, you will make more strokes with this club than any other club in your bag. And ladies, this one is often the most misfit, as I talk to uh, club fitters all around North America, and this, again, you're gonna make more strokes with this. So where, how is it misfit? A lot of us, I know me included, my very first putter was a hand-me-down from my dad. So maybe you got a hand-me-down from a dad, a grandpa, a brother, a spouse, whatever that may be. And again, yes, this part of it is great, but it's the length. So most of us aren't as tall as our male counterparts. And so if, if that putter's too long, it's putting your eyes in a different place over the golf ball and not setting you up for success and aligning you properly. So it's often, on many clubs, it depends. Uh, it can, might you know, change a little bit of the sh uh, weight of the, sh of the shaft. So you please go see a, a professional club fitter. But they can often take the grip off, uh, cut it down, and put it back on with a putter. You can't cut down clubs without making it stiffer. Your regular clubs, it'll become stiffer. And again, it depends on your shaft but please see a professional club fitter. This is a huge difference. Also, putters can also, they can change the, the, the loft and lie of your putter. And that can just be bent in a machine. It doesn't mean you have to buy a new putter. So I'm a huge fan of go get your putter fitted. It's the best money you will spend uh, on, on your game. And it's, it's, it's very inexpensive. So to make sure that it fits you. And of course, there's so many different styles of putters. There's mallet putters and blade putters and, and the, ali the different alignments. This is a two ball. It's got triple track. So if you struggle with your alignment, you can check all the different angles or all the different lines. Huge. That's a huge thing. And not just your putter, ladies. Every single club in your bag. I can't stress this enough. Uh, this, these clubs are expensive. And so I don't want you walking into a store going, oh, look at those pretty pink clubs or purple clubs. Oh, those look awesome. No, 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 no. You need to be fitted. The first question you need to be asked is, hey, what's your club head speed? And hey, that's okay if you don't know your club head speed. Again, go to your local golf town. And for the, our, our American friends down in the U.S. there, uh, your Dick Sporting Goods or your PGA Superstore, your Golf Galaxy, many of them have simulators like golf towns do in Canada. And what you can do is for free, have your club head speed measured. And for driver, now this is just ballpark, but if your club head speed is uh, 75 miles an hour or less with driver, you should probably be in a, um, uh, I would say like a, a women's, what they would call women's flex shaft. But again, that shouldn't even be called women's flex because there's gentlemen that would benefit from that type of a flex of, of shaft. If your club head speed is between 75 and 85 miles an hour, probably a senior flex shaft, 85 and 95 miles an hour, uh, men's regular, and 95 and up, probably a stiff. So again, if you were a girl that played softball growing up, hockey, any of those kind of sports that used, that had that, that idea of like using the, the torque from the ground and using that core and guts, then yeah, if you take a good rip at it, a, a lady's flex shaft might be way too flexible for you. And a lot of women say to me, oh, Lisa, I'm not a good enough golfer to get, uh, to get fitted. No, actually, the more inexperienced you are, the more a fitting will help you. Please go see your professional fitter. Um, again, from wherever you are, you can Google professional fitter. Golf towns have professional fitters at every single golf town at all 47 stores across Canada. But again, you can Google that to find a professional fitter uh, that fits for you. And on that note, I have a special surprise. So happy Women's International Women's Day on this upcoming Wednesday. Uh, this is so exciting. Uh, my sponsor, Callaway Golf Canada, has kindly donated a driver. This is an $800 value. This is the brand new Callaway Paradigm Driver which is my gamer, so I'm super excited about this. Uh, and then, Cal uh, then Golf Town has uh, donated the fitting for this. So the, what, they, what they've done is they, this, is the, this is the newest driver, the newest of the new that you'll have seen on the PJ Tour, LPJ Tour. Uh, this is Callaway's uh, most forgiving, uh, longest, and most adjustable driver. It is absolutely phenomenal. It uh, has 15% less dispersion rate meaning that you'll, you're improving your, your miss hits by 15% more from, from previous drivers. So this is a game changer and this is going to go to one lucky winner. So to win this driver, all you need to do is like this video and throw a comment in the, in, in the chat. What I would like to know is what is a tip that you would like me to cover in the future or do you have a question? Do you have a golf question you would like me to cover in a future video or do you have a tip you would like me to go over? Please throw that in the chat and that will automatically register and, and you'll have to, sorry, like 
like like the video and also make sure that you like the Golf Town Facebook page or uh, that would be perfect. So if you like the Golf Town Facebook page, like this video and throw a question or tip that you want to know more about that will automatically enter you into the draw. The draw will go all from today all the way to uh, Friday, this upcoming Friday and uh, the draw will close at 12 p.m. Eastern time and then on Monday, March 13th uh, on Facebook, uh, a Golf Town will be replying to one of the comments on Facebook and letting you know that you'll be our lucky winner. Now, please, I'm so sorry. Uh, Golf Town is based in Canada. Unfortunately, with contest rules, this is can only go to a Canadian. So I'm so uh, sorry for my uh, American and Australian and all my other viewers in New Zealand who have come to watch. I apologize. Um, but uh, so this is for Canadians only, unfortunately. But um, but I wish everyone good luck. And most importantly, ladies, I wish you all a very, very happy International Women's Day. Women are so amazing. That's why I do women's golf schools because I feel that we are better together. We can, we laugh, we have fun, we are strong, we are smart. And you know what I love? I love when we lift each other up and not tear each other down. Let's be those women. Let's be those women who lift each other up and are strong and supportive and are great friends and moms and sisters and aunts. Because you know what? Let's be those women, let's know those women, and let's raise those women. Ladies, happy International Women's Day coming up this Wednesday, March 8th. I'm sending you all big hugs. I hope this is a phenomenal golf season for you. I hope these tips will help you hit it longer, straighter, better for our 2023 golf season. And uh, please share with me other tips you'd like me to, to go over in future videos. So ladies, thanks so much for joining me. I wish you all the very best. And I just say, uh, 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 Audra, aligning uh, uh, the putter properly, reading the greens is huge. So that's one of the questions she has. Vicki, love the swing thoughts. Thanks for the feedback, Vicki. Uh, Donna, oh, how kind of you to wish, wish all of our Canadian ladies good luck. So see, Right there, women lifting other women up. Love it, love it, love it. Ladies, thank you so much, and we'll see you soon. Bye.